Hi, I'm Derek. I, I'm European. I live here in London. I'm PHP 7 Force Release Manager, which pretty much means that every month or so I have to make packages, make sure that the security patches got merged, and then release things by announcing those in the mailing list. Today is the release date of PHP 7.4.3. So after this presentation, I'm going to have to release that. Um, I also work on XDBook. You might have heard of that. If not, please Google it. Uh, and if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask me. If there's anything during the presentation, I usually would uh, invite you to ask the questions by raising your hand, but I won't be able to see the hands. So I'll do the questions at the end of the presentation. I think that work would work better. And maybe somebody can run around with a mic. I don't know whether that, that works or not. I like maps. I like beer. I like whiskey. Some of these things will come back in examples. And if there's any further comments, feel free to ping me on Twitter. It's also in the bottom of my slide. Mm, can't quite see that there, but that's OK. All right, so what is the biggest thing in PHP 7.4? It is type properties. Now, you know how I said that I like whiskey? So my example, my cl I also like using emojis in my class names. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you do that in production code, but it at least put some color to the slides here. So properties you can already have in PHP 7, or PHP 5, or even PHP 4. But what you can now do in 7.4 is you can also add a type to it, which is new and pretty cool. So in this case, we have the word public, private, or protected. And then you have a type name. Um, in this case, int for integer is a number. Uh, you can use class names. You can use fully qualified class names and namespace in front of it, as well as uh, nullable. Uh, versions as well. So the butler can either be a, a, a class, so an object of the butler class, or it can be nil. You can also make them on static properties. Again, the type name comes after the public and static keywords. Uh, you can't, of course, have a type called static because that gets confusing here. Uh, you can use default values for them. So in this case, the int rating is 92. That's Sounds like a pretty good whiskey to me, if it's uh, out of 100. And then you have things like nullable strings. And then the last bit is that it is also possible to have multiple properties in one, in one row. But I think that most coding standards prohibit that. And I would probably not recommend you do that. But it is possible, possible that the keyword public would count for both of those property names that you've defined. And so will the type. So this has public bool chill filtered and public bool coloring added. Now, how does this actually work? Now, if we have the following bit of code, again, don't use emojis in your real code. What would you guess the output of this was? What, what do you think this output? Anyone wants to shout out? An error? Yep. I heard uninitialized property. Some of you have been using PHP 7.4 or, or reading documentation. That's mean. <laughs> uh, but yes, it will, uh, it will give you an error message because this property h hasn't been initialized yet. And if it's not been initialized yet, you, you don't know which type it is. So PHP doesn't know what type it is. So which means that any time you access an uninitialized property that hasn't been set to any value, default value is a set value, then you'll get a uh, error throwable. Uh, so the initialized state is checked when reading properties. OK, next one. We have this bit of code again. The distillery property has been defined as a type distillery, as a class. I set it as a string. What do you get as output? You get an error, right? Because that's what you expect. It says it must be an instance of distillery, but we use a string. So type validation is used when writing two properties. OK, so what's the output of this one? In this case, I'm not setting distillery, but I'm setting the int, the h, to the string 29. Anybody wants to guess what this does? Can't hear anything, um, but this works. This works fine because type coercion is still being used. The script isn't doing ty uh, strict typing because we didn't define that for the script. So type coercion still works. It gets automatically converted to an integer just like it would do for a argument, for a method or a function argument. So when you define strict strict types, then of course you'll get the error saying that it's the wrong property type. That makes sense. On top of the introduction of type property, a few other things have also been changed or 
actually added to PHP's type system. Before PHP 7.4, if you would inherit a method, you would have an overloaded method, then all the method arguments, as well as all the return types, had to be of the same type. Now, PHP 7.4 relaxes this so that it follows the Liskov substitution principle, which is a big word. I hope to explain it a little bit here. But it would allow you to um, widen types or narrow types depending on whether you have an overloaded uh, either argument or return type. So let's have a look at the return types first. If you have a bakery, a bakery makes, makes bread. That is a quite a wide range of things because it is includes muffins and whatever things, right? Bready things. A patisserie is a more specific type of bakery and it would only make baguettes. I mean, that's silly examples, but hopefully you get the, the gist out of this. Which means that in this case, a return types are covariant, meaning that they can return a more specific type. Because that means that any time you'd use this overloaded class in any context where you originally would accept a, a bakery, that's still fine, right? Because the return can never return more than the original class or original method might have expected. So restricting what you return in a return type is fine, or leaving it the same as it is. That's called covariant return types. Uh, and in this case, you get a fatal error because we're doing the other way around. We start with a more specific type and then widen it in an overloaded method, and you can't do that because originally classes that would have made use of the original class wouldn't necessarily understand how to do anything beyond using a baguette. They don't know how to handle all the other bread, for example. So they cannot return a more broader type, but they can return the same type. Now, the argument types are exactly the other way around. So in this case, we have the class Asterix. <laughs> Need to get the examples from somewhere, right? And Asterix hunts boars, which is quite a specific type of animal. Now, any class that, ex that has an extended method is fine to accept a wider range of animals because classes, this method could then decide on its own to handle the wider class of animals and then um, also handle the boar case, for example. So method arguments can accept a wider or a broader type range or the same. But you can't do it the other way around because that would mean that in a context where you would usually use uh, asterisks as a class, you wouldn't be able to use goals because it would, co it would only be able to handle a narrower type, in this case, a boar. Means it's a bit of a tricky concept, but it does make sense if you look at it. You basically need to say, if I have an overloaded class and method, can I use it in the same context as I could use the original class and method? In? Now, there's one addition to this, which ties in back to the properties, the property types. So property types in PHP can only have the same type. So in this case, uh, they're the same type, they're both planets, so that's fine. Because properties are both something you can read to, sorry, write to and read from. And because of both these constrictions, you'd m in order to be able to use a property in an overloaded class, they have to be the same type. So th we call these invariant property types. And if you do this wrong, uh, you get an error message. Okay. Kind of a complex subject. PHP 8 is going to make this more complicated by also having union types. And I need to figure out to come up with better examples in that case. Okay. There's a whole bunch of uh, smaller things in PHP 7.4. I will go through those a bit quicker. And then we go back to slightly more interesting things. So it's a bit of a big, uh, a big mix of things in here. PHP already had an assignment operator. It's the equal sign or the percent equals, not percent, sorry, asterisk equal sign but basically change the value in angle, right, by doing the multi multiplication. We have something like the null coalesced operators, means like if this first, if the, the bit behind the equal sign is null, then we use the value, the string value behind it. But you'd still have to duplicate the whole property that you're going to set to as well as the one that you're comparing with to be able to use this value or default value. In PHP 7.4, you can now do this in one go by using the question mark, question mark equals operator, or the no coalesce assignment operator. 
um, can be kind of handy in this kind of situations where you need default values, for example. The spread operator is something that has been added to also be able to use this in a literal, in an array literal. The dot 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 or splat operator, or spread operator, whatever you want to call it, you could already use to accept an array of arguments, sorry, extra arguments to a method that then will be put in an array that is would have been, in this case, apples as an array. And these things you could already do, 7.4 extends this to be able to inline array literals in another, an, uh, in another array literal. So in this case, we have an array called apples. We have a red apple and a green apple. And then we have an array fruits where we have a pear, a peach. Then we embed all the other elements from apples in there. And beyond having apples as a static array here, you could also use an iterator for that, for example. And then at the end, we add a strawberry and a tomato. And then when you call implode on them, you'll see that we get our lovely fruit salad. Now, people complain about that tomatoes don't belong in fruit salad, but uh, I got it as criticism in one of my previous versions of the slides, but I'm going to leave it in. All right. There's a whole bunch of code that you could write in PHP that is really silly. And of course, everybody makes silly mistakes. But in PHP 7.3 and earlier, you would never get a warning on this. It just returned null. PHP 7.4 turns this in the into a lot of warnings. So the first one, we have var, we set it to false. It gives you now five warnings or notices in this. The first one, it says, trying to access an array offset of value of type bool. That gives you a warning. And then the uh, square bracket two will give you uh, offset on type null, the three, the four, and the five will all do that. Which is kind of handy, basically show you that you're doing something wrong, but rather otherwise you just get null, and it's kind of be hard to find because it could either be the one, two, three, four, five array index that would have been different, and you wouldn't necessarily know why. Uh, it will also do this array offsets on numbers, like I have in the second example where var array is one, two, three. Var zero is, of course, the number one, two, three, but you can't take the one offset out of a number, so you get an error for that. And similarly, you'll get the same kind of warnings if you do this on arrays with null uh, in the last example. Something a bit bigger in PHP 7.4 is something called FFI, foreign function interfaces. This big disclaimer is absolutely necessary. FFI is a really good way of talking to C libraries directly from PHP. There used to be an extension in PHP in Packle a long time ago for PHP 5. It's called XFFI. We also named that XDangerous because it was the fastest way of making PHP crash. Uh, not because it was wrongly implemented, but because it's really hard to do. Because in order to make use of this foreign function interface, you need to know how you interact with C code and how pointers work and memory management works and things like that. Normally, PHP developers are not necessarily all, fam all too familiar with that. So this is a kind of um, a harder way of doing this, or well, let me rephrase that. It is an easier way of doing things with C libraries, but it is a harder way of debugging this kind of thing because you have to deal with both C and PHP. So this is bundled with PHP 7.4, but it isn't enabled by default because it can be kind of dangerous. Also consider as experimental and there's no documentation or very little documentation. In my opinion, this should not have been part of PHP 7.4. I think it should have been in a Packle extension for a while and then introduced in PHP 8. But um, yeah, well, not always my opinion counts, or it counts, but you don't always agree with me. That's what I meant to say. So now, how do I use this? Now, I'm not sure how many of you have seen that C code, so I'll start with a very simple function, which I have in a library that I've written um, for doing calculating the position of the sun in the sky. Basically, what the arguments mean is like the double, the D, is uh, a time, or a point in time. Uh, it is not Unix time stamps, but it doesn't particularly matter what it is. You get to a uh, Unix form, oh, this doesn't work on the screen. I always keep forgetting that. Uh, you go from the Unix timestamp to the number that it needs by this calculation. Uh, I can't actually remember what it is. But where in PHP, you can really return only one uh, one return value from a function. That's the same for C. But in this case, this function needs to return six values. 
And in C, it's a common way to do that as an API by using by passing in the pointer to um, where you want to store the value in. And in order to from C land to do that, you need to make sure that you have created space for this pointer that the sunpost function is going to write into. PHP doesn't really have that concept, so that makes it a bit harder to explain. Okay, so what a function does is you give it one number and it returns six numbers back, which tells you where the sun should be in the sky. Now, how do you use that? From PHP land, you use uh, FFI load, you give it a header file, and in C, it's a common way to have header files defined in H files, dot H files. What FFI implements is actually a very basic part of H files that only will understand function definitions as well as type definitions and round do preprocessor macros and stuff like that. So it's a very stripped down parser of header files in C. So this, F this variable FFI now holds this, well, it's basically an object that does marshalling for all the functions that are defined in this header file, in this case, sunpost. Now, because we use this pointer thing, we need to create places in memory where it's to store these values in. And in or because this is done with a C type, it's the double C type, although this is the same in PHP, you need to create these five arguments here you need to allocate an FFI object that has the exact same type as what the header definition says. And then when you call the sunpost function, you give him this date here. I'll have to use this mouse. You put this date in here, and then you get, by passing in the address of the containers that you made, because that is what the, uh, p p sorry, asterisk does in front of the um, return types in the header file, you get then the result of the spec. Now, this is a trivial example, but it took me quite some time to come up with this because, the, as I said, there's no documentation. So you need to come up with, well, how do I create memory structures? Well, you do it by FFI Neo. How do I pass it in with FFF address? In the end, I think this could be quite useful for writing PHP extensions that you now will have to write C code for. Write them in FFI, which is basically writing them in PHP, but it does mean that you could compose or install these PHP extensions without having to recompile anything. So I think this is quite powerful, but I think it is more something to be used for uh, people that already know C and want to make all the libraries available through Compose without you as a user having to compile any new extensions. So I think that's where the features in. All right, I can see you, so I can answer your question. All right. Okay, so the question is, does this create an object? It doesn't really create an object at all. The FFI variable is basically just some magic that makes this work. So there's no actual object. Um, there's no compilation happening whatsoever, no. no. All right. The next big thing is preloading. Well, or so we thought. I'll, I'll give you the caveats in a moment. Opcache is an awesome tool to make sure that PHP doesn't spend lots of time recompiling or parsing your script every time it sees a new file. It is awesome, but everything in PHP is currently based per file, which means if you have a file defining a class that extends another class, and that class, that file hasn't been loaded, PHP uses auto-loading mechanisms, right? And that still works fine with Opcache. But for every time it sees this file in every new request, it would still have to check whether the inheritance works, whether the function arguments match, and it will have to do more work than in PHP 7.4 because of the type properties. Uh, it has to do quite a bit of work still. Now, wouldn't it be great if it wasn't a way of PHP doing this upfront before it even starts running your script? And that is what preloading is about to solve. So in PHP 7.4 has this new any directive called opcache.preload, of which you can specify a PHP file which will be run before PHP's request cycle starts, and where you can preload code. Now, as a small example, um, on the command line, you turn it on by uh, opcache enable one, which you need to have, opcache enable CLI.1, because opcache usually only works in a uh, web server environment. And then the extra argument is opcache preload equals file name. 
If you do, you can of course also do this in PHP R9. Now, the moment you do this, the files that are being preloaded through this preload file, if you change them on disk, it won't change anything in your application. And the only way of refreshing the code that's been preloading is by restarting PHP FPM or anything else that runs PHP. Do something as a caveat. Now, how does this work, or how do you make use of it? In this case, this little script, what it basically does, it has the underscore preload function, and the only thing it does, it basically loops over all the argum all the files in the current array. If it's a directory, calls itself. It's basically a recursive way of finding all the PHP files uh, under a certain path. In this case, var www ten framework library. And for each of these files that it finds, it calls opcache compile file. It does all of this, and then at the end, opcache has already pre-discovered, uh, uh, pre-resolved inheritances, checked all the abstractions, um, resolved all the traits that you might have used, so there won't be any overhead of doing that per request, which of course means that you end up speeding things up. It's not a lot, but it is about 10%, which is always worthwhile to have. Um, oh, okay, so caveats about preloading. Uh, it doesn't work on Windows. Um, I can explain at some other point later why it doesn't work. And before PHP 7.4.3, it's not really, it's a bit crashy in places, so let me put it that way. So wait until later today if you want to play with this. PHP 7.4.3 should have all these things resolved, but it still won't work on Windows for reasons that I'll leave for some other point, uh, other time. Now, I spoke about FFI a little bit. The stage that is really slow in using FFI is uh, looking at all the definitions in the H files. Now, if it is only one line with the sun files from previously, that's not a lot of work. But if it's a more complicated API, that takes quite a lot of time. But you can uh, hook preloading and FFI together. And in this case, in my preload ink, the one that I used in a previous slide to load to Zen Framework, I can also use FFI load. Give it the header file. Um, and then in the header file that I'm loading, I have my function definition for synpost as well as the FFI scope. The FFI scope, you can then use later in your script to find this little marshalling object, FFI, to then call the functions against, which is what I've done here. Uh, now, this is going to be um, fun for the future, but I wouldn't quite say this is prime ready to use yet. I'd wait until 7.4.5 or 7.4.6 to really use this in production, I would say. All right, so with type properties come in other problems. Some frameworks, <coughs> Symfony in this case, uses a hack to find out whether arrays are references of each other. And it uses it like a side effect in PHP, where if you assign a array, although it copies over the main array, all the array elements in there, if there were references to other things, it will still keep these references. It wouldn't duplicate these bits. And Symfony uses that for finding out whether the things are reference or not. Well, in PHP 7.4, you can no longer do that. So there's a new class, part of a reflection, it's called reference reflection. And you can use that for finding out what is a reference to each other. Now, I have a very small example. I've, I've created an array with three elements, 0, 1, and 2. I create two references, once to the second element in the array and once to the third one. Then I add an element to the array, the fourth element to the array, uh, which I then also make a reference to the third element in the array, which is um, the number 2. I really should have made this one-based and not zero-based for this to make more sense in an example. In any case, with this reflection reference, you get back something uh, that represents a reference, or you get null if, that's, if it's not a reference. So let's have a look at what the script actually outputs. For the first one, for the fardump R0 and R1, it returns first null, because, well, the first element in the array, the zero, has not been referenced anywhere, so it's not a reference. Whereas for R1, which is a reference, which you get see here as a 
so that doesn't work. I have a reference, uh, reflection reference you get back as an object. And then all the other ones, you can get the ID out. And if the ID is the same, then you know that these things reference the same element. Now, this is something that I don't think many of you would be using or should be using, but it is there in case you relied on this additional behavior that PHP 7.3 and earlier had. There is a new custom serialization mechanism because two of them isn't enough. Uh, there is a reason why this has been added. The serialable, serializable interface in PHP has issues in such a way that if you serialize lots of nested objects, unserializing only one of those objects that have been embedded in this serialized string, you can't really do because it define, depends on context potentially done earlier in the string. So you can't plug out only certain bits to unserialize reliably. So that is a problem with the serializable interface. The sleep and wake up magic methods are not powerful enough to do any useful things with because with sleep you can only specify the property names that you want to serialize basically. And which means you can't do any calculations, you can't do type checking and stuff and that. Um, so that has a deficiency. So the next one in 7.4 is two new magic methods. They are called serialize, sorry, underscore underscore serialize and underscore underscore unserialize, which if available, you can use to return the property names and the values that you want to serialize. So in the example here, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> when we call serialize here, what we're basically returning is the property T, or the we call it T, that is shorter than temperature, and in that we store the temperature. And then when we're restoring this by using underscore underscore unserialize, then we pluck out the value of the temperature back out of the array. Now, if you want to do this in a nested way, you can, but you need to do this yourself. So in this case, we have a fire class that has serialized and unserialized, and then we have a star class that extends fire. So how you would serialize from that is then you do the properties of, that, of the class that you're doing then, and then you call parent underscore underscore serialize on the class that's been extended to then serialize that part. So it is up to you now whether you would serialize the properties from classes that you have inherited. And of course, if you do that, you also need to restore them by calling calling parent unserialize in underscore underscore unserialize. It's the same thing as setting up class, classes with constructors and destructors. Right? You're supposed to call parent parent underscore underscore constructs to set up things defined in the parent class. And then you get this lovely string that, um, well, it's on the bottom of the screen. It is not particularly interesting. PHP 7.3. If you wanted the hash extension, you had to enable it. And PHP 7.4, it's always there by default, which is a great move, which means that functions like password hash and password verify are always available now. And everybody of you should be using that if you do anything with passwords. Yeah, I know, this is a boring one. <laughs> PHP 7.4 has new features. We also removed a few features, or we removed a few extensions from the core distribution to be sp more specific. X recode. Anybody of you ever use that? I have, but that's probably 15 years ago. Uh, alternatives called IconV is a lot better. Uh, the recode library that the extension used hasn't been updated since 2001. Uh, old software shouldn't really be used. XWDDX, any of you have used that for anything? It sort of started at the same time as SOAP. Um, of course, this has now been surpassed by using JSON as, as a, a transport mechanism. So this extension hasn't been removed yet, um, and there's no alternative for it, and it has been moved to uh, the Packle extension repository, which we uh, sometimes kindly refer to as Siberia, because this is where extensions go to um, freeze, basically. And then the X interbase extension, which has been removed from the core distribution, had no maintainers. Um, the moment the vote for removing this extension came through. Uh, a few maintainers that apparently existed but didn't interact with anybody else, saying, why are you removing this? We're maintaining this. Uh, well, you're a bit late now. We did ask for people whether they were maintaining it. So it, I'm happy to announce that although this is no longer part of the core distribution, people are maintaining it again, which is good news. And they can do this in, this own leisure, in their own leisurely time 
in a Packle repository without having to wait for the PHP release cycles, which happen basically uh, once every year. All right. So I like talking to people about all the stuff that makes into PHP. And it's a modern thing to know. You start with a podcast. So I started a podcast last year called PHP Internals News, where I get to talk to all the people that uh, are things with PHP. Now, because there's so many features in PHP and it gets kind of boring to talk about it, what I sort of want to do is also introduce you to people that actually work on the code. And with that, I s oh, the sound actually worked, that's great. That's the opening to tune. So what I'm doing is, every time I talk to somebody, I have them introduce themselves. Um, I end up talking to a lot to a specific person, he's Nikita Popov. He's basically um, responsible, responsible for pretty much 80% of what's got added to PHP. But let me introduce so myself. So hi, I'm Nikita and I work at JetBrains uh, to develop PHP, in particular writing some nice RFCs that we can discuss on this podcast. <laughs> right, this was episode one. I've, since then I've spoken 20 times to him or something like that. He gets a little bit annoyed with me bugging him anytime he comes up with something cool again. In any case, the first thing we spoke about was saying a string and number comparisons. You know that PHP is kind of weird with comparing zeros to strings with zeros in it and so on, so he made a nice RFC for that. Uh, however, this never made it to a voting, so this might make it into PHP 8. So it's kind of useless to talk about in a PHP 7.4 talk, but it might show play them. Hi everyone, I spoke I'm with Joe, Joe Watkins, I work on PHP and related tools, that's me. So Joe, he does kind of interesting extensions, like slightly on the edge kind of things. He did the uh, parallels extension for using some parallel execution in PHP, but I spoke to him about something called weak references. So weak reference that actually made it into PHP 7.4 is a way of creating a reference to an object without keeping a PHP memory manager reference to it. And this is important in situations where sometimes you have like an ODM and an ORM that keeps objects, meta information about objects that are loaded from the database in memory. But the way how, what currently happens is that they usually create like a big array with all, uh, with each array element having a link to the object and then the meta information. But the moment you do that, PHP can never free the memory associated with these objects anymore because there's a reference to it, which isn't really particularly performant. So what weak reference allow you to do is they allow you to create a reference to an object, but it doesn't prevent the PHP memory manager from freeing the object if there's no normal other reference linked to it which is a kind of a useful thing to have. And the way how this works is that there's a class called weak reference, and you can construct a weak reference by using the create method on that. Uh, it's a static factory method. Call it with the object, and then you get a weak reference class that encapsulates that object. So, and in order to get the object back out of it, you call the get method out of that, and that returns either the object or null if PHP's memory manager has freed it for other reasons. So in this case, oh, I can't use the, keep forgetting about that. We have this class called ghost, has a method called boo, which echoes boo. I mean, what else do ghosts do, right? So we create this object, we create a weak reference to it, and then we call get on the weak reference, and then we call the method boo on it. When we then unset it and try to get the object again, it no longer exists. So first thing it says boo, and then the second Vardam says, well, it is null in evil code. If I would have tried to call the boo method directly on this null, of course, you get an exception because you can't call methods on null. So you do always need to make sure that the reference or the weak reference is still valid before you do things on it, which is kind of useful t thing to have. So that made it into 7.4. PHP 8 will have something extended of this called a weak reference map, but this is PHP 7.4 talk. I am still Nikita and Nikita still again. working on PHP core on behalf of JetBrains. <coughs> okay, so Nikita again. Um, he spoke about short arrow functions. And short arrow functions is a new way of writing closures, but in a shorthand form. So traditionally in PHP 7.3 and earlier, if you want to have a closure that adds two numbers to, to each other, we have to do arrows, the name of the function, function as a keyword, the arguments that are being passed into the function when it is being called, 
use the use keyword, and then the why in this case is all the arguments that are bound from the outside scope to also be able to use inside the closure. Now what you can do in 7.4 is the following. You can define a closure not using by the function keyword, but by using fn combined with the arrow following the name of the function. You still have the arguments that you pass in into the arrow function, which is the x, but you don't have to import with use all the other variables from the surrounding scope anymore. So this is, of course, a lot sh shorter to write, but it also has the additional benefit that you don't have to use the use keyword to implicitly bind variables from the outer scope into the closure. Now, this is mostly useful for things like this, where if you have like an array filter, you won't only want to keep in your array everything that is already uh, part of another, another array that we do in the first example with in array here. In PHP 7.4, you can write it a lot more shorter by using this um, shorthand or short array function. And I th in my opinion, it makes it a little bit more readable. Now, the implementation in 7.4 only allows a single expression after the arrow. It is possible that in future versions of PHP, we, we would allow for multiple lines, uh, which of course is currently what you can do with a traditional closure, but also has still keep this additional benefit of having the uh, variables from the outer scope implicitly um, bound to the closure themselves as well. But that might be PHP 8 or not. All right. PHP 7.4 tidies up some warnings that depending on whether you implement a class, uh, sorry, whether a class implements an interface, any argument ma uh, arguments in the signatures don't match, you get a fatal error. But if you did it between two classes, you would only get a warning. In PHP 7.4, these things are being thrown together to make sure that they always behave the same, but also that they didn't make it into PHP 7.4. Uh, PHP 8. Again, sorry, I have to wait until the end of the year. Question for you, what is the output of this li little script? I'll give you a few seconds. The correct answer is, this shouldn't have passed uh, code review, because nobody should write code like this. <laughs> uh, so in PHP 7.4, this now adds warnings. It outputs four, by the way. Uh, yeah, go try it out as a, if you want later. And uh, PHP 7.4 will now show you this. It will show you a deprecation warning saying that you can't use nested ternaries unless you use parentheses to indicate what you really mean to do. In PHP 8, it is possible that you'll get a fatal error if you don't use parentheses. But I'm not sure whether that will actually be merged into the language yet. Um, because, of course, doing that breaks code. Uh, we don't like breaking people's code. All right, what is the output of this example? What did I hear? You, you said shout or something. Sum 37. No, the output of this is actually just 7. You want to guess why? I'll try to explain it. The dot and the plus operators have the same precedence, meaning that they'll get executed from left to right. So the first thing that PHP does, it does sum, and then it adds as a string the number three to it. So that results in a string sum colon space three. Then we add a number to it, and the moment you use a plus, both operands need to be number. What is the numeric value of the string sum colon space three? It's zero. And then it adds 7, so the result is 7. In PHP 7.4, it says, the behavior of unparent, er, I can't pronounce that word, unparenthesized expressions containing both a dot and a plus or minus will change in PHP 8, where the plus and minus will take a higher precedence, which is sort of what you would expect to happen here. Now, these subtle changes can potentially break quite a lot of code, because it's a very subtle thing that changes in the language. So when Nikita wrote this, he actually looked at the top 1,000 PHP projects on Stack Overflow and found several occasions where this was done, but all of these were bugs. Um, so we are pretty confident that anywhere where people do this, it is never on purpose. And in that case, that makes it an e 
easy decision for us to then break this kind of code and aid because if it's bug in all the cases that we can find this, I'm pretty sure it's going to cause issues that you hadn't expected in your own code somewhere as well. Okay, I have Nikita again. No worries, I won't play his soundbite over and over again. It's a simple, simple change in 7.4 is that you can no now throw exceptions from the two string methods. In 7.3 you couldn't, and you get a fatal error that says method explode to string must not throw an exception. In 7.4 it will still get a fatal error because uh, you haven't called the ex exception, but you won't get a fatal error because you are throwing exception from the two string method, which is kind of handy. It's a minor thing, but I guess it makes sense at some point. Simple change to the language, quite a big change internally in PHP, because two string is used in so many contexts that, and they all had to be made safe for them also being able to do with an exception being thrown from them. Um, so sometimes these things look simple, but are actually quite a bit harder than, the, than they look like. I'm Scott Dutton, I got involved in PHP uh, in my early teens. Okay, sometimes the sound quality isn't the greatest. Uh, this was Scott, and he made a simple change that, po that me personally causes the most amount of grief in my own code. What is the output of this script? Base converts, com converts the string from base 16, in this case, to base 10. That's so hexadecimal to decimal. What is the output of this? If you can guess what the answer is, you're pretty good with this. I'll give you, I'll give you uh, the, the answer. It is 237. No warnings or anything like that. How does it get to 237 here? Well, basically what base convert does, it ignores everything it doesn't understand for that base, which means it only sees the E and the D in the string, and hexadecimal ED is 237. Yeah, great, isn't it? Uh, PHP 7.4, this will now say deprecated invalid characters passed for attempted conversion. Now, some of my code, I had um, used this as like a cache key for something at some point, but it had a minus character in it, and minus is, of course, not part of this, so that ended up filling up my log saying that um, I did do something wrong. Actually, that code is used in this presentation, so I had to go through all of these slides to make sure that the templates were cached, otherwise, this error would have actually shown up on my slide giving the presentation. Um, yeah, I haven't fixed that code yet, I should really. Bishop, right. would you mind introducing yourself as well? Yes, I am also a full stack developer, have been using PHP since 2003. Okay, so Bishop and Scott got together to add another uh, syntax tweak to PHP 7.4. If you have big numbers, it's sometimes really hard to see how big the number is because well, if, if you would write this down in like text, you'd use a dot or a comma or whatever, or an apostrophe between the thousands, right? In PHP, you could never really do that, but you can now in PHP 7.4, you can use the underscore between numbers in numeric literals to make these things easier to read. Um, it also works for all of the other um, uh, situations where you can have a numeric literal. So it works in like floating point numbers where you can have the underscore between every third. Where you cannot have the underscore is between the three and the dot, and the dot and the one. It has to be between two numbers. And if it's a hexadecimal decimal number, the a to the f also count as a number. You can, so in this case, I use that for pi. It didn't, pi didn't fit on my slide. It's kind of a joke, mild joke. Sorry, too early for jokes. Um, but I think where this mostly makes sense in cases where you have like, um, um, so like the TT watch thing is a little tool that, I, that I've extended to to read the date of my watch and it comes in all kinds of hexadecimal numbers and, and boxes and stuff like that. And these things you had to hard code. And by being able to use the underscore that actually makes that code quite a bit easier to read. Uh, or when you have to deal with binary things for turning on the I.O. ports on your Raspberry Pi and stuff like that. I think this is a more usable case than just doing for the big numbers because in general, it's very unlikely that you have uh, like constants for these big numbers in the first place. Where you absolutely should never use it for is for things that aren't actually numbers. Now, hopefully you never hard code a phone number, a credit card or the social security number in your PHP code. 
If you do, you probably should find a different job, in my opinion. Uh, unless, of course, you're doing testing with uh, the payments, right, where you sort of have to hard code your credit card. But remember, these things are not numbers. A credit card is not a number you don't do calculations with. A phone number you don't do calculations with. You don't add one to the number. Now, I actually don't know if this is a real phone number, so please don't call us. I just <laughs> matched up some numbers again. I probably should have added an A or something in it to make sure. So yeah, so don't do that, but you should never have bonus in the first place. Hi, so my name is Sorry, Theodore Brown. I'm a full stack developer. I've been working with PHP for almost 10 years now. So this is a curious thing. Most of the people that did some of the smaller changes to PHP 7.4, they weren't original C developers. They were all working on their PHP code. They found something wrong with PHP. And they came up with an idea, well, maybe make PHP a little bit better, so I write an RC for it. Some of them can write their own code, their own C code to actually implement the features, but many others went, got together with somebody else that is more familiar with the code, in this case, I think Theodore spoke with Bishop again, to then implement a feature in PHP. So you don't necessarily have to be a C developer to propose changes to PHP, but it would be really helpful if you at least have some patch. It doesn't have to be a fully fledged patch, but it needs to be something that it looks like it is implementable. Because sometimes IDs are great, but implementations are really hard to, as an example, generics. I'm sure all of you would love to have those in PHP, but that is not a simple task, for example. In any case, um, Theodore uh, came up in an RFC to deprecate the curly brace method for accessing array elements and string offsets. So PHP 7.4, uh, will no longer just show you 5.5 SS, but it will also show you the warning that array and string offset access with curly braces are now deprecated. All right. yeah, hi, I'm uh, Matteo Beccati, and I'm a PHP consultant mainly. So I've, I've met Matteo several times. He helps organizing the PHP Day conference in, in Italy, and he likes PDO, and he likes using newer fangled operators in his... Um, in his uh, SQL statement. So in the last few years, relational databases like MySQL and PostgreSQL have added JSON kind of style things um, in order to get along with the times where you have like document data stores, um, like HowToBe and MongoDB, for example. And the way how they implement all these interesting new features is by introducing new operators. In this case, it's the question mark operator. Now, the question mark in PDO, as you probably know, is basically a placeholder for a value. So you couldn't use this SQL statement. That wasn't me. I don't know what happened there. In any case, I'll just, continue, uh, I'll just continue talking. You can't have the question mark because this is a value, right? It represents a value operator. So you need to then, um, what should we call that, escape it to be able to use it. So that is what Matteo provided. He added an RFC that allows you to escape the question mark. And the way how you do that is by duplicating the character. Now, so instead of having one question mark, you get two question marks suddenly. Now, that looks a bit weird because usually you would expect expect things to be escaped with a slash in front of it in strings. But in SQL, it's already a common thing to escape operators that need to be escaped by duplicating them. So in this case, instead of having the JSON call question mark foo, you get JSON call question mark question mark foo. So it doesn't interpret that specific uh, question mark as a placeholder for a value, but instead use it as an operator. Okay, I'm not quite sure what's going on. I only have two more slides, so. The last slide, I can just talk about it, this slide is not important, is all the deprecations in PHP 7.4. There are a whole bunch of things that we have removed from here, uh, from the language that almost none of you use. The real type uh, is basically a synonym for double type, uh, so we don't need it anymore. There's some uh, constants that are not there anymore, that's the Filter sanitize magic quotes filter. Hopefully none of you even know what it is anymore. There's some other code that's still made use of magic quotes. 
yeah, that's been removed. PHP 5.4, a decade or something ago. And a whole bunch of other things that none of you really use very much or we couldn't really find any evidence for for people still using. It's still flashing like no signal linked at me here, uh, distracting me. I don't know, it's definitely plugged in here. Um, so yeah, these things are removed. Um, I wasn't going to throw to all of them one by one anyway. Um, but have a look at the slides when they get published to find out whether these things affect you or not. 